Hello everyone, in this tutorial we're going to switch it up a little bit and instead of demonstrating some of the SQL techniques you might need, we're actually going to show you some debugging techniques and debugging techniques are really really important when you're trying to write your code. First and foremost, if you have some experience, you know you probably already have good debugging techniques and you might want to skip this video. However, if you're new to SQL writing and in particular writing select statements and using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, um, this might be helpful for you. So first and foremost, I'm going to create a new query. And I'm going to be working with two tables within a database that I have here. And it has um, just a small handful, a small number of tables. We have dependent, de depth, which is for department, employee level, employee, position, and qualification. So these are the tables we're going to work with. And the database itself is really built around uh, the table known as employee, which has a number of columns as you can see here. And several of the columns are, indica are indicated with an ID field, so it starts to indicate uh, their foreign keys and they are related to the other tables in the database. So let's just check out this first query. And I already have one prepared, so I'm just going to copy and paste it here to save some time. I'm going to select the employee ID, their L name, which is their last name, and their department ID. I execute the query, and I get a neat little uh, resulting data set. Nothing too um, surprising here. Now, I also have another query pre uh, prepared that's going to actually retrieve some data from the depth table, which it's also related to. The employee table is related to the depth table. But notice, instead of opening up a new query window, I'm going to just add it to my window here. And when you do this, uh, you can actually run the queries, and you get both resulting data sets down here in the query grid. In the results grid, I'm sorry, sorry. So now that's pretty neat. But what it starts to show you though is if I only want to run a specific snippet of SQL, and in particular this particular select statement, I could highlight it and click execute. So it saves you a little bit of time. Now, if I was working on this same select statement, and I'm going to copy it this time, and just for uh, example sake, uh, I'm going to delete these out. And I'm going to just paste in that first select statement. Clean it up here a little bit, make it a little bit easier to read, make it a little bit better formatting or friendlier formatting. So we're going to pull some data from the depth uh, table. What if, by chance, I'm coming along, I'm writing my SQL, and uh, I'm going to create a typo. Okay, there's no field called depth aim. It's actually depth name, as we saw, it already worked. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that, and immediately I get an error message. So this is a really, really small select statement. So one thing that you can do is you can read the error message, right? It says MSG 207, level 16, state 1, line 3. The most helpful bit of information in this error message would probably be that right there, which is line 3. If you're new to SQL, you could say, well, it's got to be on line 3, 1, 2, 3, there it is. It's, it's this field right here. Or you could double click it and it'll light it up. Now, a majority of the time when you double click the error, it will put you on the actual error itself, but it may not, it may put you near the error. So that's another little debugging tip. You can actually double click the error message and go in there. Now, because we're dealing with two tables that are related, uh, and we want to retrieve data from both of those, we definitely want to do a join. And I'm just going to build out a, uh, a um, in, an implicit join statement, which is like the old join. It doesn't use the word join, which is an explicit statement. So this is the implicit statement type. And I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to copy and paste here for, for sake of speed. So I have my first part of my select statement. And I'm going to actually pull data from the depth table. And I'm also going to include uh, the depth ID there, the employee's last name and the employee ID. I'm going to build out my join statement where the employee dot depth ID equals the depth dot depth ID, which is the primary key to foreign key relationship there. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and execute it. Hmm. Okay. So I have a little bit of an issue. A really common mistake anybody working with SQL early on can make when doing joins is they get this error known as the ambiguous column name is or ambiguous column undefined or or so on but it's ambiguous the database is really just trying to say hey which one do you want so it's it's saying employee ID 
and also depth ID. It wants to know what table. So notice this, though, so in the employee IT, in the employee table, employee ID exists and depth ID exists. If I go over to the depth table, depth ID exists there, and so does employee ID. So what you have to do is you have to qualify the column with its table name. So one way to get around this is to place the employee, if I could type today, table name dot column name for that one, and we could run it. Oh, the, the error still exists. I'm going to double click it. It highlights it. Well, of course, depth ID also needs to be qualified. So what we could do is we will pull that from the employee table and we will run and execute that. Our error clears and we get the resulting data set. So whenever you get that ambiguous uh, message saying it's ambiguous, uh, you can actually qualify the field with the table from which you want to pull it from. I hope these small tips will help move you along through debugging your SQL. Now, there's one more tip that I would also like to give you. If you're, going, you're coming along and you're working on your, your, your select statement, and this last tip that I'm going to give today, I'm going to remove what I had started with, and I'm going to generate that ambiguous error again. So the ambiguous comes out, and there it is, ambiguous column name. We learned that if we qualify it, well, uh, we just put the table name followed by a dot, period, right? If you run it again, we're going to see the error again. If you're looking at this, if you're new to SQL and you're still trying to figure out where the error exists, because this is a very small select statement, one thing you can begin to do is break the query down or break the SQL down. This is a tip that we use in writing SQL or in writing programming language code, whatever it may be. You can begin to comment out areas of your code in order to isolate the error, which then also ultimately allows you to duplicate the error. So if I see this error appear here and I don't know what's going on, I'm going to comment out with two dashes because dashes are recognized in Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And I'm going to execute, hmm, incorrect syntax near the word from. Well, I, I believe that's because there's a comma now appearing here. So I'll remove that. All right, good. That cleared it. So I have it to work. Now, I, that allows me to focus a little bit more on where this error may exist. So I'm going to put it back in. Hmm. Okay, now we're honing in on it. It's obvious that it's depth ID. We already went through this. You can put qualify with the table name and it works. So by commenting out lines and removing commas where appropriate or putting commas in where needed in order to continue making a nice uh, SQL syntax, you can actually hone in on where that error exists. So those tips there all together, I hope they help you out.